let's talk about falling. So this is actually the second video in this little series. While we did the first thing inside on mats, today is the day where we go outside in the real world, but it's still grass, so it's still a bit soft. And we'll also have a look at gear and how to fall with it. So just to summarize very quickly the most important points of the first video. The first thing is get a professional to help you. <laughs> Second thing, um, you would want to start from the ground up. You want to minimize the risk of failure as much as possible. So if you're starting to train falling, start on the ground, start in a kneeing position, start in a sitting position and train your faults to each side, okay? Try not to hit with hard things in the body, the ground. Instead, use your natural pads, use your muscles to not only dampen the blow directly, but also to slow the fall with your muscles as well. Well, I would usually not recommend beginners to like um, post on the ground because it poses a wrist for the wrist, the arm and all this kind of stuff, the shoulder as well. It is still completely possible and completely normal, especially if you're falling forward, that your arms go here and dampen the fall. Basically, you're doing some variation of a push-up, right? The most important thing is protect your head, protect your spine. Everything else comes afterwards. But still, we don't want to damage our knees, <laughs> our knees, our elbows or our hands. So we generally want to train this a lot because falling actually is such a useful skill it will serve you very, very well long after you quit martial arts or sword fighting. Not that we have any aim to do so. All right, so we know our falling. We know how to go from a standing position to a on the floor position. We might even be able to roll. Now let's talk about the gear and how it dampens these techniques that we just learned. Well, rolling can be quite hard if you have a fencing mask on because now your head is quite a bit bigger. So it might be really hard to get it on the side out of the way. So I would generally, with a fencing mask, advise you, if you can, try not to roll, especially if you're doing your back rolls, right? If you're trying to roll on the shoulder, this shoulder for example and you go over here then with a mask with a big mask the head might just be stuck in the ground and that might mess up your neck okay so if any if it's possible try to just lay on the ground and absorb that pressure okay so you might want to train this a bit more the next thing is the sword Usually, our dominant hand is occupied. Sometimes we even have something in our non-dominant hand, a buckler, a shield, a dagger, something else. So this might get hard as well. So don't rely on posting on the ground. You might be able to throw the blade away to then fall. That's fine. Just make sure you're not uh, hitting anyone with that. But in general, I would at least try to hold it away from you. So if I need to fall on my right side, on my dominant side where the sword is, well, I can still use the big pads of my triceps and shoulder muscles to fall here. Or even better, well, just try to fall on the other side if that's possible in any way where you still have your free hand. Another important thing is, especially with a mask, you add weight onto your head. So keeping your head tucked gets quite a bit harder, especially if you're falling to the side or on the back, where your head basically gets an impact. As you hit the ground, we have a pull. It's um, 
the motion tries to continue towards the ground and it's a really tough strain on the neck. So especially for a fencing mask that is a bit heavier, you want to train your neck. I also talked about this in a video of preventing concussions actually, where training your neck actually helps you to absorb, absorb the force that goes into your head in, into the whole body in essence. In essence, um, lowering the total acceleration and therefore uh, the, the risk of getting a concussion and that holds still here. You might want to check out this video as well. But just again one quick exercise to strengthen the front neck and the side neck would be if you're lying down here you just tuck your chin and go for 20 repetitions. You even can get your fencing mask and put it on your head as well. Do the same stuff lying on the side, tilting the head up and down or side to side. You want to train this, you want to train this. If you're falling forward, in essence, or the back of the neck muscle is quite a bit stronger, that shouldn't be that big of a problem. If you're falling forward and you're doing this basically motion here, this should be fine. But still, training is always good. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, start low, work your way up slowly, then introduce the gear, and then if you're happy to do this on your own, get a partner, get a slight push, a slight direction to fall. Um, and start once again low and work your way up, all right? I see you in the third video where we will put on full gear and have a look at more specialized scenarios that we'll find in free sparring. Until then, ciao, ciao.